Let's talk 1A sectional play. This, this is a bloated. This man. is one, yeah, on paper, this is one of the most competitive in the entire state. Absolutely. When you take a look at the team's record, South Adams against Adams Central, both teams 7-2. and two. Northfield at Busco, 7-2 and two Northfield, 8-1 and one Busco. Southern Wells is at Eastside, Eastside. Six and three, while Fremont is at Southwood, and Southwood is eight and one after winning the TRC championship mm -hmm. last week over Northfield. So, how do you see? Let's start from the top. South Adams, Adams Central, a rematch where we saw not all that long ago Adams Central dominate them, forty-eight to fourteen. I feel this is closer the second time around. South Adams has kind of grown up a little bit. That was their first big game for a lot of these young kids that South Adams is playing. I still like Adams Central. I think they're playing with a lot of confidence. That win last week against at Woodland really is propelling them into the postseason on a high because for the last several years they've lost to Woodland in that Week 9 game and then had to turn around and gain momentum. They did a great job last year, Adam Central, and winning a very tough 1A sectional. Um, but, you know, now they get to enter the postseason with a win over Woodland, and that's got to help. I do like Adam Central in this one. You know, we don't know too much about Northfield and Southwood. I, I don't want to shortchange it, but then again you're kind of like, I don't know how good the TRC is, right. you know, kind of thing. And, and I think Cherubusco has been playing well as well. So Eastside was kind of surprising me. I thought last week they would give Angola a tougher game. So you're kind mm -hmm. of wondering just how good is Eastside at 6-3. and three. I missed but it was 42-14 back in week six in that AC South Adams matchup. But, uh, yeah, Northfield Busco, if you're Busco, how good are you feeling? I mean, obviously you would have liked to have Garrett Horn all season long, but uh, Nate Keener has done in, uh, come in He's and done great. a nice job. He's gone over 1,000 yards on the season. Yeah, who would have thought when you look at losing Garrett Horn, your best, arguably your best player on both sides of the ball, and you probably finish with the same record you likely would have finished with Garrett Horn, 8-1, maybe 9-0. But a tremendous job by Cherubusco to really make up for the loss of Horn and do a great job. I, I feel the very winnable game on Friday against Northfield. Week two against Adam Central or South Adams, probably Adam Central maybe a little bit different. But, you know, 8-1 after losing your senior leader like that, tremendous job. Eastside. On paper, should take care of Southern Wells. Who knows if the Raiders can compete with what the Blazers have. Obviously, Eastside you know, winning a share of the NECC Small Division Championship. They know what it takes to win. Um, and then Fremont at Southwood, uh, again, on paper, Southwood. Uh, <laughs> what can looks you like, say, huh? Looks like they will take care of business. Uh, now, based on Harrell's, Adam Central gets a 26% chance to win this sectional. Southwood 23, Eastside 21, and Busco 19. That's pretty evenly distributed. Yeah, and I think you can make a good case for either all four of those schools. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens. That'll be one of the more fun sectionals to watch over the next three weeks. For Who, sure. Who's your pick to win this sectional? This sectional, I'm going with Adam Central. Really liked what I saw last Friday, uh, offensively and defensively. The way they were really able to limit the playmakers of Woodland. They've already handled South Adams once. I feel like they're going to have a lot of confidence going in this game. Drew Schultz and Logan Macklin, I mean, what can you say? Those two kids really dominate. We knew what we were getting with Drew Schultz this year, but Logan Macklin, all 5'7", 145 of them, has just been tremendous. The kid doesn't tire. He plays both sides, sides of the ball, leads the team in tackles. I mean, he's been tremendous. And limiting Woodland offensively to just 21 points. That's pretty impressive considering how many explosive options that they have. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, Woodland was able to get the passing game going a little bit more in the second half and kind of open it up. But running the football, I mean, they were really able to, uh, to bottle up Justin Rhodes for the majority of the game. All right. And we, what are you most looking forward to about week one here of the postseason? Is there like one theme well, or one thing that you are most focused on as we get ready for winter go-home football? I'm really fascinated with the 4A because I think 19 and 20 – and then going into that regional is just, I, I don't know who to pick. I mean, you can make a capable argument for a lot of teams, and I'm not overly confident in picking any of them because there's so much in the way of challengers. So it'll be interesting to see how it weeds out. I feel the regional winner out of 19 and 20 has a very good chance of representing the North in the state championship game. I just have no idea who it's going to be. All right. That is why we watch on Friday there nights. We do. And then we'll sound smart every Monday. Like yes, we and then, gonna we'll, happen. then we'll, you know, have a revisionist uh, exchange afterwards and talk about how we were right all the time <laughs> uh, based on the fact that we hope you don't remember what we said the week before. That's, that's the key. That's how it works right here on Inside the Zone. We appreciate you joining us. He's Justin. I'm Glenn. We'll be back next Monday.